This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. I'm seeing something happening in the online space that I want to discuss on the show today. And that is regarding trademarks and using words and phrases that potentially you do not have the legal right to use. When you're starting out in business and you have so many other things to think about and to juggle and so many different things you need to invest in, it's easy to overlook the legal matters and actually not just overlook, but potentially not have the knowledge or awareness that you may be doing something wrong or that that could get you into trouble. So what I've been seeing in the online space recently is people unwittingly, unknowingly using somebody else's trademark. And you might think, well, maybe the phrases they're using, they seem really common. They're part of an ordinary vernacular. The problem is, though, if you are using somebody else's trademarked course title as the title of your course, offering a similar package and a similar result, then you can actually end up in some significant hot water. What I'm also seeing in the online space is people deliberately going up and purchasing the trademark of a very of well-known courses so that they can have it for themselves. And there is such a thing, I'm not entirely sure of the correct phrase, but if someone has had a pre-existing use and can prove pre-existing use and pre-existing common knowledge of a particular term, then one, the trademark might not be given in the first place. But if the trademark is then awarded, that the person who has been using it longer term than you as you have trademarked it is able then potentially to take that trademark back or take you to court over it. So how do you get around this? How do you protect your creation, the entity that you have come up with, when to all intents and purposes, all you're doing is trying to make some money. You're not trying to tread on anybody else's toes. But how can you stop yourself getting in hot water? So the first thing I would say is go to your country of origin and check the trademarks. So for the UK, you can literally go into Google and put gov.uk trademark search and you can see in their log, you can do a word search to see if things are coming up. Sometimes there are logos or images that are trademarked as well, but you want to find that phrasing. I would also then after you've gone to your country of origin, I would also then heavily recommend that you go over and check out the the United States. Because particularly if you're planning to do anything online and international, anything, and these days our companies can be global very quickly. You want to make sure that no one has trademarked a particular term or phrase in the same categories that you want. So categories are also really important. And I don't understand or have enough knowledge to confidently talk you through those on this podcast. I just want you to be aware that this is something you don't want to overlook in its entirety. Now, it might be that someone has trademarked something very similar and yet different to you. And that is okay. You would be able to proceed. For me personally, the very first time I trademarked something, was because I had created a challenge. It was my very well-known podcast challenge, but I had never trademarked it. And the morning that it went live, I had somebody contact me to say, are you aware that my challenge is also called such and such, the particular term that I had used at that point? And I knew this person and I wrote back and I said, well, of course I didn't know. Why on earth would have you trademarked it? Do you own it? And also historically, I know your work and previously the last two iterations have been called something else. And I have deliberately not gone with that term, albeit these are common phrases within the podcasting space. And so I decided at that point that I would create and go and change everything about the particular challenge because I didn't want that conflict. I knew they didn't own the trademark, but nor did I. And I actually didn't want that yeah, conflict, I suppose. I didn't want to be treading on anyone else's toes. And actually, I had deliberately created something so that I didn't think I would be. So what we did was we rebranded that challenge very quickly. 
it was a complete pain in the backside because we had not only you know, the name of the challenge, all of the assets to do with the challenge, the group name of the challenge. We had something like 15 emails, which were linking to the group, which had the particular name, which had a particular link. It was a complete headache, but it meant that I wasn't kind of in this war with somebody else. And immediately that day, I then went and trademarked launch your podcast challenge. So no one around the world can actually use that or at least if they do, I would have the right to take them to court or ask them to cease and desist. I think that's the correct phrase. And it taught me that I never wanted to be in that hot water ever, ever again. So if this is something you haven't looked at yet, when you trademark something, it's actually a fairly simple process, but it isn't cheap. And I think that's one of the reasons why people in the early stages of their entrepreneurship development don't necessarily do this. You end up paying per class that you were in. You end up paying for subcategories, for example. So for me, not only do I have launch your podcast challenge with capital L's and P's and C's, I also have everything in lowercase. The same for the podcast membership. We have it in upper and lowercase so no one else can say that. They, they can't refer to what they own as the podcast membership. Only I can. Now, sometimes a term is not going to be okayed. And it can be quite a lengthy process. It can take three to six months sometimes. Sometimes they're three much quicker and it's a really simple process. But you want to make sure your back is covered because there's nothing worse than spending hours and hours and hours designing, developing, creating content, creating videos, creating assets, creating workbooks with the title of a course that actually legally you can't sell. It's really challenging. And Maggie Collette, who's been a guest on this podcast, we recently helped her launch Think Like a Boss podcast. And one of her episodes is about what happened for her with a course that she put out there. I don't think I'm even able to say the name of the course previously, but her course was all about how to use Instagram and it had the term gram in it. And so she received just over Christmas a kind of legal, a very threatening warning that she had to stop immediately. And she was mid-launch and that was her, her main product. And I would invite you to go and listen to Maggie's episode all about that. I think it's is it between episodes four and six or seven on Think Like a Boss podcast. You don't want to get yourself in this hot water. So whenever you're coming up with a new course or a new program or a new idea for certification or a new membership, just go and do those very quick searches in your country of origin and in the US. It will literally take you minutes. Now, in terms of podcasting, People often say, well, what podcast name can I have? And the truth is, you don't, nobody can claim a podcast name. The only way you could do that is actually if you have the trademark in your country of origin and potentially in the States for that particular name. So, for example, Unstoppable Success, Nick Pigeon owns that trademark in the US. And so nobody else could actually call their podcast Unstoppable Success. She could, she would have, although they could put a podcast out with that, she would have the right to challenge them on it. But this happens so often. And what you'll notice as you become better at what you do, as you become more well known, is that you will trigger some copycats and you want to protect yourself. In the online world, it's your packages, your the brand name associations that are so powerful. And so I hope that this has been thought provoking for you and that you you take this seriously because, my God, if you've spent hours, weeks, days thinking about and creating content for a particular launch and then you cannot launch that product or service because you have someone come after you quite heavy handed with a legal issue, you're going to really regret that. And so I just want to share with you a little bit about the things that I've encountered myself, that I see other entrepreneurs encountering and I just want to encourage you, protect your brand, take your business seriously and just go and do that research because you might land yourself in hot water unwittingly and unknowingly. So I hope that that has helped you. I'm going to invite you at the end of this episode to go and check out the podcastagency.com's new website. We went live with it just on Thursday last week. I'm very proud of everything we've put together, showcasing everything we're doing with launching high profile podcasts that are having phenomenal results all across the world. And also our new podcast guest booking service, our podcast booking boutique, 
where we're working with high caliber podcast people who want to be podcast guests who want to leverage this incredible space where you can accelerate that no like and trust factor but more importantly than that not only getting in front of the right ears but having the right conversations with the right hosts as well to have that high level networking if you are a podcast host yourself and you would like access to our exclusive roster if you want to know how you can have a really great quality client on your show, then there is also a form for you to fill in to apply for us to match you potentially if you have the right audience for our roster. So go check that all out at thepodcastagency.com. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.